Welcome to the 8th section of the Mastering Cassandra video course. In the previous section we further polished the user interfaces and functions, and made dynamic stock charts with real data feed. In this section we'll add in some more advanced and cool features to Cassandra Web Trader application. We're going to further enrich the functions and features of the application. We'll secure the application with login and user authentication. We'll also program the logic for scanning trading signals. The trading signals found will be stored in Cassandra, which can be inquired online. We'll also make a scheduled job to send out daily trading signals through email. Lastly, we'll add in user roles and authorization supports. Okay, let's begin from user login and authentication. In this video, we'll use Spring Security to protect some of the application functions that require user login. We'll then learn how to use Java Config and Tag Libs to secure the application. Spring Security supports authentication and authorization. We'll first enable our members to log on to the application by username and password. Add in the Spring Boot Security Starter Maven dependency, as shown here. Also, we need Spring Security Tag Libs. Then create a Java Config class called Web Security Config. Annotate it with at configuration at enable web MVC security. And extend it from web security configurer adapter. Since we need to access member data to check the correct username and password pair, we need the Spring Security's provided user details service to do so. Then we write the URL patterns in the configure method. It does two things. First, we use Apache ant patterns to denote the URL patterns that are accessible for anonymous users. For example, the home, error, member registration, public, and so on. The second thing is to configure the login and logout page to be used. In our application, we use a simple HTML form login page. Then we override the configure method to link up to user service for authentication logic to auth manager builder user details service. The so-called user service interface should be implemented by our member service, so open member service class. Modify it to implement user details service. Add the unimplemented methods. The one that we need to do is load user by username method. Change the parameter name to username. The logic here is very straightforward. We try to retrieve the member data by the given username through the member repository interface. If the username is not found, simply throw a username not found exception. Otherwise, we return a new instance of user details IMPL class. The find by username method hasn't been coded yet, so let's do it now. Add the at query to look up the member table for that username. The last missing piece is the user details IMPL class. Create the class. It should implement the user details interface. Add the unimplemented methods, add the member attribute, and set it up in the constructor. Then the get authorities method. For the time being, we assume all authenticated users are granted with role underscore user authority. Next, set the get password method to return the password of the member. Then the get username method, and so on. Go back to member service. Correct the error by importing the user details IMPL class we've just created. Next, we need to create the login form. To speed up the task, we don't create that from scratch. Do login.jsp by copying register.jsp. Modify the page title. Add an error block to show in case of any errors, such as invalid username and or password. Add another block to show if the user has just been logged out. Then fix the username and password controls and change the caption of the submit button to login. Then use web config class to add the view controllers to register the view name to the corresponding URL. Next modify header.jsp to show login and logout links. And we want to make the menu bar dynamic to show different options to an anonymous user or an authenticated user. It requires spring security tag lib added at the top. 
For an anonymous user, we want her to be able to access the home, login, and registration. On the other hand, authenticated user can access logout, chart, watch list, and so on. So we use the authorize tag to do that. Let's run and test the application. Now we see that the menu bar shows less options for anonymous users. Click login. Enter user 0001 and his password 123456. Click on the login button. Wow, the menu bar has changed to show the member only options. The chart shows up. Other links also work like a charm. Finally, click on Log Out. Well, we're brought back to the login page with the logged out message displayed. So, we enabled login and authentication to Cassandra WebTrader. Next, we'll look at the algorithm of finding a trading signal.